Hello, and welcome to um, another new episode of Words with Willie. Um, I'm your host, Willie Johnson, and today, today I'm going to get you a job. All of you will be able to get whatever job it is you may want. Um, <clears throat> you see, recently, Willie had a, had a great opportunity. Um, I was hired by a little company called Facebook. My... My qualifications were none. Um, in fact, I, I was fired on the first day. Monday was my first day. Um, Willie made a boo-boo. And Monday was also my last day. Um, no severance. Apparently that's the thing that only cops and firefighters get. Um, which is not, not what a Facebook engineer is. Um, but I was able to get the job. Which is pretty impressive. Um, Willie is not even a middle school graduate, so, you know, I, I was doing something right. And that's when I realized I'm really good at job interviews. Um, you know, I've, I've been compared to Forrest Gump a lot. I've, I've been all over the world, um, done lots of things that I shouldn't have been doing, screwed them all up royally, um, but yet I still keep getting hired. So tonight on Words with Willie... What I want to do is is share my secrets with you, um, share my success with you, um, and you know any any interview questions you may have, I, I would love to love to answer them for you. Um, if you're nervous about the interview, I will gladly coach you through a mock interview where I'll be interviewing you for for a job. Um, or you know if you have have some interview advice, I would also love to hear it. Um, so let's, let's open up the phones. Um, Amanda, if you could throw the, throw the number on the screen, once you get the phones on, which Willie definitely remembers, it's four zero two two eight one two nine three three. So let's get a call. Um, and let's talk about some interviews. Hello, caller. You're on Words with Willie. Are are you? You have a job interview coming up. You've never been to one. You you haven't had your interview cherry popped yet. Um, no. You know a lot a lot of people they they get nervous. Um, you know they're scared of it. Um, they think it's intimidating, but it's not. It's all about dominance. You are there to dominate the interviewer. You put your presence over them. Um, you know, you you really make them. You make them fear you. Make them afraid that they don't hire you. Amanda, can you make sure the desktop audio is on, please? Not like me. If the person doesn't like you, um, you know, what you got to do is, I mean, you, they don't have to like you to hire you. They just have to be afraid of what would happen if they don't hire you. So wait, what if I put a gun on them? I was going to say, caller, do you own a gun? A, I wouldn't pull it on them. Don't point it at them. That's a crime. But definitely let them know oh. you have a gun. You know, that's a, or oh. you don't even have to have a gun. Uh, if you have a jacket. Put your hands in your jacket oh, yeah, pocket yeah. and do this, and you know, just make them think that you have a gun. Oh, okay, okay. So, what job should I work at? Maybe McDonald's, maybe the local Walmart. I mean, those are those are great, great starter jobs. Um, I would I would definitely go the McDonald's route because Willie, that was actually uh, his first job um, when I was when I was twenty four. Oh. Um, oh. That was that was my first job, and I gotta say, what you gotta do, um, you get free food when you work there, and that that's a benefit. Oh. If if you're not afraid oh. of sticking your hand into a live fryer, you get even more free food. Dang. Okay. Okay. I might I might go there, but um, how much does it pay? I... Oh, they pay like I... shit. It's uh, it's absolute oh. dog shit pay. Definitely not enough to like live and support yourself. 
Well, Willie, uh, so there's this thing called tax. I'm pretty sure a lot of us heard of it. How much do you get taxed? Tax. Or pay tax. I've never. I mean, it depends. Is that it that thing on, that everyone does in April? Uh, unfortunately, no. Uh, I'm pretty sure this happens to everybody. I think you're a special person, Willie. You don't get taxed because uh, um, you're very special. Yeah, I, I mostly get, uh, you know, just cash at the end of the day. Um, especially oh. when I pull the gun out. I remember I had a job oh, interview yeah. at a bank once, and I used the old gun trick. Oh. They paid me that day, like, $8,000 cash. Oh, oh, wow. Did you spend that to get a house or, or like, a new computer? Oh, I spent it on cocaine. Oh, how many grams? Oh, you for eight grand, you can get like a you can get like a key for eight grand. Oh, nice. Well, <laughs> Willie, it's been nice talking to you. Thanks for the advice. Of course, and, and caller, good luck on, on your upcoming interview at either the McDonald's or the Walmart. If you can get a job at the McDonald's inside the Walmart, that's that's a good get. Um, anyway, oh, hail yeah, Satan, yeah, definitely... and um, you know, don't forget that gun. L Satan. I'll definitely ask for an AR-15. That's a good one. Yeah. So that's our first lesson tonight. If you want to get a job, you intimidate the interviewer. You make them fear for their lives and, you know, make them fear for what would happen if they say no to you. Um, you know, I call, I call my gun, I call it the, uh, the old yes cannon. Because when you point in someone's face, they'll say yes to anything. Um, same in improv. They say improv's yes and. Pull a gun during an improv set. You're yes and in everyone. All right, let's get another call. Hello, caller. You're on Words with Willie. Hello? Is this Willie? Yes, it is. Hello, is this, is this Reggie? Yeah, this is Reginald. Fantastic. Reggie, how, how, how are you tonight? Re Reginald is one I'm of our, doing our founders. I'm doing pretty great. Um, I'm doing him and his great. Five Guys Baptist Church. The Seventh Baptist Church. Yes. Uh, I I apologize. Uh, I, I, from what I remember last week, you had a falling out with them. Is that correct? Yes, I did. So, I, I got some good news, Mister Witty. Uh, I would love to hear the good news. Ready? I'm always ready. I am now the senior pastor of the Seventh Baptist Church. And d tell me, did you have to interview for that position? Uh, yes, I did. It, you know, uh, we got people tonight watching. You know, they're curious about what to what to do in a job interview. Well, you know, what were some of the tactics you did? Oh, I just came on in and I uh, I asked to be part of the church, and they said that uh, my sabbatical was a test and. Uh, they were offering me the new position to be the the brand new pastor of the of the church. What well, I I'm very uh, impressed, Reggie. Now now tell me, are you going to make any reforms within your church to make it you know less terrible? Let, wait, let, let, less terrible? Yeah, you know, because you guys like yell at you like protest outside of uh, funerals or abortion clinics. Um, you know, you, you talk about keeping the, the Christ and Christmas, all that lame shit. Uh, well, some of that stuff is not that lame, I, I wouldn't say. All those things I, I listed were extremely lame, caller. What makes keeping back in Christmas lame, Mr. Winnie? Well, because Christmas is all about just, you know, spending money pouring money into like all these mega corporations and, um, you know, showing people how much you care about them in a monetary way. Like this person's worth $10 to me, but this person's worth $20 to me. Even know how Christmas started. Uh, I, I, uh, I think it was something like the pagans would dance around a tree to, to, you know, hope for a good harvest in the upcoming year. But the point of Christmas is to celebrate the ultimate gift to the world. A blumpkin. 
Uh, no, that's actually pretty disgusting, Mr. A Mitty. bumpkin's the nicest thing someone can do for another person. Uh, I would not say that. H- how? That's it's pretty... If you're willing to, to pleasure me, well, I'm expel in words you can understand, expelling demons, what, what better thing is there? That's not what a blumpkin is. Yeah, it's when you get blown while you're taking a shit. Yeah, but that, that, there's a difference between um, winning salvation and uh, winning the free gift of salvation and uh, doing that. Have Very clear difference. You ever, you ever finish after like you've been constipated, you've been eating pills for the last week, it's, it's coming out like, like, you know, like rocks? When you finally get that out, you feel pretty, pretty uh, saved. Okay, uh, back to my interview. Oh, um, yes, yes, interviews. Tonight we're talking about interviews. So they asked me to share my testimony, and uh, they told me uh, they, they told me in order to be the pastor, uh, I'm gonna have to I'm gonna have to find a a willing uh, a willing youth pastor. A willing youth pastor. Yeah. So and, uh, I was gonna I was I was wondering uh, if you <laughs> you'd be interested in uh, possibly taking the position. Are are you offering to to interview me right now? Yes, of course. Uh, I'm I'm wondering if you'd be interested in being a youth pastor. All right, yeah, let's do this. All right, ask me your first interview question. All right, all right, here we go, Mr. Woody. You seem like a really good candidate to be a youth pastor. Let me tell you, you I am you're youthful. Very fun. You're very fun. The kids very love fun. me. You're very. Say it again. The kid kids love me. I can fit like seven of those suckers on my lap. Yeah, you probably make a great Santa Claus. I, I would. Anyway, here's the first question. Let me just go down my list here. All right. So, uh, do you have an interest in this job? Does it pay well? Uh, it pays pretty well. Uh, let me see here. It's about uh, $30 an hour. Holy shit, yes, yes. I'm very interested in that job. All right. So first things first. Uh, what, when when were you saved? When was I saved? Um, I remember I had a... It was actually three years ago. I was at a Golden Corral. And I was just crushing some chicken wings. Um... You know, I got a little careless, got a little carried away, swallowed a bone. Um, you know, some some real burly Midwestern woman came up behind me, and one squeeze, that bone went shooting out of my mouth. She saved my life that day. Oh, really? So three wow, years ago. Okay. So is that how you came to Jesus? No, that's how I got the chicken bone out of my mouth. Uh, okay, well, I'll move on to the next question here. Okay, uh, what do you do? What do you do to feel the closest to Jesus? Well, he's a he's a dead guy, so I guess uh, you ever like just just get real close to death, like you just you just over consume whatever you know, booze, drugs. Um, oh, actually, no, the closest to death I've ever been. Um, sometimes when I jerk off, I tie a belt around my neck. Uh, okay. Well, define what that is exactly. Auto erotic, ex- ex- auto, auto mechanic asphyxiation, I believe is what it's called. Um, you tie a, you tie a belt around your neck and right before you climax, you pull it real tight and then the darkness starts to encroach, but then the light comes out of your dick and it feels amazing. It's like yin and yang. Interesting. I, I have a friend named Dick. I'm, I'm not sure if, if if you have one too. Um, I do know that the kids would love to learn about mechanics. So uh, I, I would love I would love to, to teach the kids. So, all right. Uh, here's the final question. Um, what activities do you like to do with with the uh, with kids? <sighs> um, you can teach a kid how to pickpocket real easy. You know, you go to a crowded street, maybe like an outdoor market, 
um, like a farmer's market, a bazaar. And, you know, you, you don't even have, honestly, you can ask the kids to beg and they'll bring in big bucks. I once had this seven year old, he had kind of a lazy eye. He, he made me $120 in an hour at a farmer's market. So you're saying you're going to teach kids how to, how to get jobs? I, I'll be, I'll, I, in that sense, I'll be the employer. So you're, you're, I'm trying to figure out what, what exactly, uh, what'd you say, uh, stone pocketing? Pickpocket. They steal people's wallets. Stealing people's wallets? Yeah. I, I don't exactly get how that's, how that's, uh, how that's helpful to kids, but, uh. It teaches them a good life skill. Teaches them how to lie else, better. You know, it teaches else. them. It teaches them charisma. You got to be charismatic. Um, you know, acting, acting skills. You know, it's it's a whole process. Okay, well, good acting. Uh, all right. Anything else you like to do with kids? Um. I I mean, if I could, I would like to claim some kids on my taxes. Um. Uh, that's, that's the only thing that's been keeping me from doing them all these years. So I hear you get a big tax write-off on kids. So if you got any orphans at your church, you know, I'll, uh, I'll claim them. Oh, yeah, just we, don't, we got a lot of orphans. Don't expect me to, like, take care of them. Um, I just want their social security numbers. All right, I'm getting that written down. Social security numbers. Uh, all right, well, uh, thank you for for uh, being part of our interview at the Seventh Baptist Church. Did I get um, the job? Uh, well, we'll have to, I'll have to go through my elder board and see, but I'll, I'll go ahead and say you're the best candidate so far. I mean, uh, you know, I don't, and I just want to add, um, I hit a bomb in your church. So if you don't hire me, you know, that bomb may go off. I'm the only person who knows how to disarm it. I don't think any of the other candidates can disarm that bomb, so keep that in mind. What? I hit a bomb in your church, and I'll disarm it if I work for you. Are, are, are you serious? Maybe, maybe not. But do you want to take uh, that risk? Uh, 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 okay, Mr. Willie, I, I gotta go, okay? All right, I look forward to hearing from you, and hail Satan. I gotta take care of this bomb. Good luck. Uh, Liam, you want to see my shirt? It, uh, says sucking on chili dogs outside the tasty freeze. Um, because John Mellencamp rocks my socks. All right. So that's, uh, that's lesson two. I, rem I maintained eye contact with that interviewer, the entire interview. And if you noticed, I used a little bit of lesson one at the end there. All right. Let's get another caller. Hello, caller. You're on Words with Willie. Um, do you have an upcoming job interview? Uh, y yes, I do. Uh, can you can you hear me, Willie? I can hear you loud and clear, caller. All right, all right, good. Uh, my name's uh, Niall, and uh, I have a job interview for a uh, film that's uh, coming in the next year. Oh, okay. So it's an audition. That's what they call it when movie stars interview for a job. Yeah, pretty much. Okay. Um. So I just there's a few issues but uh i'll probably work them out eventually it's just i don't know why they would hire me of all people so i guess there's like a lack of confidence there caller you gotta have confidence going into a job interview even if you don't have a gun go in there like you're the only one with a gun now can you tell me a little bit about the part that that you're auditioning for um so specifically i'm pretty much going in for the role of the person who saves a hostage and I'm supposed to go in and pretty much shoot everyone in one go oh well that's easy enough you know, what, what are you having troubles with uh, so I just want to clarify the name of this movie is called the Bukaki man right so okay. and it's and it's a, it's an adult film right and uh, most is, good action movies I, are you want that yeah, R yeah, rating pretty much. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so here's the thing. I don't know why they want to hire me of all people because, you know, my penis is kind of small. I don't know how I'm supposed to bukkake all the women in the room and shoot them down 
in that one, you know, go. I don't know how to make that believable. Well, I can't even. I, I couldn't. I couldn't even reach like five miles if I wanted to. Oh, well, call. You're saying Bukake, and uh, I, I may be mistaken, but Bukake, those were the the Japanese pilots who would fly their planes into into the sides of ships. So you're playing like a Bukake pilot. Um, so I mean, and you know, with the Me Too movement and everything. Um, a director or a producer shouldn't be asking you to show, show your penis. So here's the thing. Let's say I agree to it. It's, it's pretty, it's pretty small. It's like six inches. So I don't know if that's going to pass through. I don't know if that's going to, I don't know if I can shoot and ski at, at least like 12 feet ahead of me. I can only get like maybe half a foot. Uh, have you tried, uh, Drinking more water, you know, that you stay hydrated. That'll prepare you for the role, um, you know, so you can go in there and just bukake everyone you see. I mean, I, I could try that. Uh, should I or should I pack them into these? Should I pack the should I pack it into like a slingshot and try and slingshot? It might go more distance that way. That's not a bad idea. If you can slingshot it or maybe um like a, have you ever seen those those softball pitchers? Yeah, I like, have. Do the wind up? Could you softball wind up the shot into these people's faces? You know, you kick open the door. I'm Bukake man, and then like you do the little two step and wind it up, and then wind it back and pa, right in their face. I wonder. I wonder if he'll agree to that. I mean, I, yeah, I could definitely bring that up as proposition. And so here's, you know, there's that. And then there's another line I'm supposed to say after that. Okay. And I don't know really how to make it believable. I'm supposed to say after I shoot all the women down, I'm supposed to say, "I just took you to Bukaki Central." I don't know how to make that a believable no. line, though. Are, are are they? And are these are the villains of the movie that you're shooting your Bukake on, right? Yes. Yes. And the line was, I just took you to Bukake Town? Pretty much. All right, this is how, this is how Willie would do it. Um, you know, I, I've acted in, in some off-Broadway stuff, so um, I've, I've got a little experience here. I just took you to Bukake Town, bitches. Throw bitches in there. You, you, got, you got the adult rating. Uh, you know, you, you, can, you can throw a bitch in there. Oh, I, I definitely hope so. I don't know. I don't know how they'll feel about the F word, but I think the B word can make it in there somehow. Or if if you if your character wears sunglasses, you do it cooler. Put the sunglasses on. Or actually, I just took you to Bukake Town. And then if you've got one more load, maybe throw it up in the air. Oh, kind of like a bouncing, uh, kind of like a bouncing Betty in a way. You no, know, I'm surprised. I'm surprised they didn't hire you of all people because you know I'm pretty modest. You know, I I, I, I didn't I, I, I didn't see that that role on uh, on Fiverr, but uh, you know I'll I'll keep my eye out. I I would love to be an understudy yeah. for it. I'll have to I'll have to put you as a reference because I, I don't know if I could take on the roles of Bukaki, man. Hey, if you if you need if you need a, a stand-in, Willie's got you. Yeah, yeah, you could you could be like the stunt double and actually. Do uh, the yeah, I thing, don't I don't I, know I, that much about Japanese culture. Um, but you know, I I know what a bukake pilot is at the very least. Well, well, well I appreciate it. Uh, you know, I appre- I appreciate this because uh, you know I I don't know if this interview is going to go well, but I'll reference you for sure. Of, of on the, course, uh, in the interview. And, and you know, if you need to bounce some lines off me, you know, you, uh, you, you know the number. I'd love to help any further I can. All right, come in my mouth. Hail Satan. You say he has a gun in his mouth? Color, please don't do anything with that gun. It's you're gonna you're gonna nail this interview. Let's let's get another call. Hello, caller. You're on words with Willie. Do you have an upcoming interview? I'm so sorry, Reginald, but I ain't gonna allow Greg Abbott ain't gonna allow this uh, bar marrying wolf endangering faggot to run your run your church. We don't use that kind of language. Um, that is a language full of hate. 
that is uh, language of the the Christian faith. We are a uh, a Satan loving community here, um, and Satan loves everybody. But let's get let's get another call. I apologize about that, everyone. Hello, caller. You're on words with Willie. Do you have an up? Do you have a uh, an upcoming interview? Willie, you are so full of crap. Oh, hey, hey, Don. You are so full of crap, sir. About what, that Don? You can give job interviews that you understand what it's like. Oh, it's so easy for you to get a job. Okay. It is. I'm very How come you charismatic. Never get a job. Huh? I'm very charismatic, Don. No, you're not. No, no, you're not. You have not given me any help on my interviews, and I've failed all of them. All ten of them I've done just this month so far. Did you did you try to did you try to overpower your interviewer? No, I spoke very nicely. That's why, Don. You... you know what? No, 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 no. There's a specific issue which is keeping me from getting a job, and I almost want you to experience it. So how about I interview you? I, I would love it, Don. Let's 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 okay. you see okay. how a good interview is done. Okay, sure. You can even pick the job. Pick the job. Um, astronaut. Astronaut. That's I don't know if you interview for that specifically, but sure, astronaut. Well, I could. I would get the job. Okay. Well, hello, Mr. Johnson. My name is John Hancock. How are you doing? Uh, John, I'm I'm doing well enough to sleep with your wife. Okay, that's a very inappropriate response, but we're going to ignore that for now. So, uh, tell me about your work history. What have you done throughout your life? Oh, I've a uh, janitor, programmer, uh, drug dealer, oh, um, ooh, dog catcher, uh, um, mm. food tester, um, uh-huh. a, a attempted hitman. Excellent. Um, and, uh, a fluffer for, for a while. That was my longest oh, held my. position, oh, actually. So was a fluffer. charming, you guy. Heavy, hard worker, you. Okay. Well, actually, I'm, I have a, I have a query here, Mr. Johnson. Um, we don't use that language, you... sir. Oh, sorry, sorry, of course, of course. I'm the one interviewing you, by the way, so shut up. Now, I, I'm very curious. There, it seems you have know, a troubled past as, um, you, you, you gave a lot of, um, jobs that you've had, right? Correct. But you missed out, um, you were a co-host once? Oh, no, I, I do. I actually host my own show, Words with Willie, um, every Wednesday. If you, if you want to hire me, I suggest mm-hmm, you mm-hmm. like, comment, I'm and subscribe. That, but I can't help but notice you were, used to be on something, and um, it looks oh, almost religious. Interesting. Let me just check this and just see uh, what kind of fun, kid-friendly stuff you were up to in your pre- previous life. Okay. Oh. Oh, this is... Very vulgar and not kid friendly in the slightest. Oh, is that it? Is that hate speech I'm hearing from the viewers? Oh, 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 oh my god! Ah! What is this, sir? What sir, what are you watching? Garbage? Jesus Christ, that's the fucking interviews I get from people. Well, Don, what, what are they? What are they pulling up? They're watching the damn show me and you were on, you idiot. And I can't get a damn fucking job because of it. Oh, no. Here's what I do. And, and you can you can use this. Um, that's a... Wait, no, 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 no. Let's go back. Let's go back. So he's vomiting. Okay, he's vomiting. a terrible show. Sir. How are you going to get out of that? Hey, calm down, you little bitch. Listen up. You're a bitch, that's, asshole. That's a man named... He's a deranged man named Donald Beverage pretending to be me. He, he stole my identity a few years uh, ago. He's a bad uh, man. Definitely do not hire him for any job ever. Uh, and that's what I do. And then Beverage. I get the job. That's not how it works. Oh. So as they're vomiting and fierce, like almost like they want to punch me, I was in that show. What do I, like, I'm, I'm not, I can't fold them and say it was a clone. Uh, you, I mean, there, there was really no co-host who was built like you and me. Um, and you can't say it was a guy named Willie Johnson pretending to be with BU because that would hurt my chances of getting a job. How has no one told you about this? I'm losing constant jobs because of this. No, I know. I tell you them. You haven't given I'm, me a good answer either, Mr. Interview Guy. How do I get out of this problem? Do you have a gun, Don? Hmm. 
I could obtain one very easily. You got to threaten them to give you a job. <sighs> See, initially that would work, but then, you know, if I want to be there long term, it's going to be very awkward. That's fine. Be, what you do, you do a little research on the job you're going to you're applying for before you go to the interview. You find out who's interviewing you. You find out if they have any kids or a spouse. You find out where those kids go to school. Take some pictures of their kids at school and take some pictures of you mm. outside of the school with the gun. Oh. Hmm. This <sighs> Something about this feels right, you know. It's it, it, that's this capitalism at work. It's, it's the man with the gun gets the job. Yeah, I mean, we all have a bad past, right? And we've all done stuff we regret. Why do I have to not get jobs because of something that I, you know, regret? So you're telling me yeah, that's a gun? School? Yes. Yes. Now, do I fire the gun at all? Uh, you cock it so they know it's real. I don't think they're going to get the message unless some blood is shed, you know? Don't shoot them. Shoot it in the air and then burn them with the hot barrel. Ooh, that gangster. Interesting. You know what? <laughs> you might be good at this, Willie. I'm actually kind of impressed. Well, thank you, Don. I, I hope it works out for you. Um, I promise that one day I'll stop using your name to... Uh, to clear myself of the sins of our past life. Wait, what? So that's what you meant by that? You said that you on that stream was just me? Yeah, I say it was you pretending. Because there's that stream where you dressed up like me. So I just show them that. I'm oh. like, see? Oh. Wait, then why can't I just say it was you? Because that would hurt me. Then I won't get jobs, Don. Well, then we're both screwed. How does that help either of us? You know what? You gave me some good advice. May I don't know. I have an interview later for the children's hospital, and I might have to pull a little uh, thing out of my pants. Uh, uh, I don't know. Well, I, let's not go into specifics here. No, yeah, you know, yeah. Legal, the, that's the best place to around kids. Pull, pull it out in front of kids. That shows them you're well, serious. Well, that's just if the interview goes wrong, you know. I mean, after so many failed interviews, you kind of go crazy a little bit. But I don't. This is the I one wouldn't thing know. I've never failed crazy. an interview. You've never failed an interview. Never. You being a Satanist, you've never failed an interview. You, they can't ask your religious. They can't ask your religious questions. Hmm. That is true. But if they ask about my sexuality, would that be a conflict of interest? Um. Only if they're asking about pansexual. your sexuality, I don't know. If maybe show them a little us. skin, and they'll they'll probably hire. That's what they're hinting for. Are you are you saying all pansexuals are whores? I'm not saying all pansexuals are whores. But I am saying all whores are pansexuals. Damn, you got me there. Okay, you know what? I'm going to go buy... Ah, maybe a revolver. Might have to do a shotgun if I'm desperate. The enough. shotgun, that's got a good... That really shows them that you mean business. So what would happen if someone calls the police, though? You have a gun. Let them know you're not afraid to kill a cop. Ice T did before. it, and now allegedly, he's on law and order. Allegedly, I've killed a cop before. Allegedly, but um, yeah, this is good. This is good. I'll let you know uh, whenever I can watch your show again how it went. I would love to hear it, Don, and and thank you for the this call is, and hail Satan. This is real good. <laughs> this is very good, actually. Oh, sorry, I'm just thinking to myself. I'll talk to you later, buddy. Bye, Don. <laughs> Bye. That's the third lesson tonight. Lie, lie, lie. You always lie to the interviewer, and you do it with a smile. People don't want to call you out on your lies, and then if they do, you go back to lesson two, with the gun. Let's uh, let's get another call. I think we've gotten a lot of we've gotten a lot of places tonight. Hello, Willie. Hello, caller. You're on words with Willie. Do you have an upcoming job first, interview? First of all, let me apologize for using an offensive word. That was wrong. So. Let me apologize for that first on the uh, earlier call. Do you forgive me for that? Apology exception pending. Pending, got it. But we need to talk about some of the stuff you've been uh, you've been discussing here on the show. Yeah, we're, we're teaching people how Ray to get jobs. Gunn, the governor of Texas, and uh, apparently you're uh, you're. 
talking about bombing a church now, huh? I said there may be a bomb in that church that I planted. All right. Well, here's the thing. We're we're sending our uh, we're sending our troops to that church right now. They're on their way right now to the Seventh Baptist Church, and they're going. They're, I've got a bomb squad going there right now, and we're looking for that bomb. We're going to trace, and if we find it, we're going to get all the DNA samples we need. And we're going to find out who darn put that bomb there. And if it was you, we're coming after you, and that's going to chalk up time, and you're in jail. I'll I'll tell you that now. Hey, uh, Governor. Good luck. Good luck finding it. Oh. Also, oh, I, I, I see. I see. That? You're you're sending your troops to a church. I haven't seen a cop come for me yet. Is that, Governor? Are well, you afraid of me? Uh, why would I be afraid of you? Why would I be afraid of you? Because we're at war. Because we're. At, I I already told you that you're not. You can't. You this you this little fat guy. I mean, you don't have a little butt. I know that because you showed it to me. Thanks for. Moving I mean, you've been thinking about that all week, haven't week. you? That. Each ass cheek's just been taking up so much space in your mind, Governor. Thinking about that sweet, sweet cheek meat. Look, no, that's not... Good Lord, no, 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 I'm sorry, but that's disgusting, number one. I don't I don't even really care. I mean, you you may, you may not have a little butt, but I'm sure you have a small something else. I'm sure that, I'm sure that that's true. <laughs> uh, I mean, looking hey, at you. Hey, Governor, ask your wife. Ask my wife? Yeah, ask your wife. I'm going to ask your wife. Do you even have a wife? Uh, no. No, no. Oh, you you can't why. lasso the breeze, Governor. Is. You can't lasso the breeze. Oh, I wonder why that is. But here's the deal. You had 30 days in jail for marrying a boy and a wolf, which you shouldn't have done. So we're still coming after you for that. But now, every time I listen to this show, you keep adding more and more stuff. The other the other guy you were just talking about, so apparently you're, you're a... Blackmailing this other guy, saying that you pretended that he pretended to be you or something, and you're just no. That's that's not that's hardly black. That's just a little white lie to to get a job I'm not qualified for. Listen, you told the last person on the stream to kill a cop. What's wrong with you? Why is why are you giving me? Listen to all these people listening to this podcast right now. All of you out there, don't take advice from this guy. Is is a is a crazy crazy individual. Who marries teenage boys to wolves? They were in love, Governor. Governor, they were in love. I know you don't know what that feels like in, in your cold, dark I Texas know, I know, heart. I don't I not know what that feels like. I'm married. You're not. You're the one who's not married. You can you can be in love and not get married, Governor. Okay, then who are you in love with? I'm in love with the world. And don't say me. I'm in love with the world. Um, I'm in love with this. Uh, this lazy-eyed hooker named Bunny. Oh, oh, wait, b- hold on a second. Bunny? Bunny. She's got Bunny a... Bunny or Buddy? Bunny. Who? Like, like a, like a bu- rabbit. Wait, hold on a second. There was somebody who called Greg Abbott saying that you stole their rabbit. <laughs> Did you steal somebody's rabbit? It's not stealing if you're in love. Oh, we're going to look into that, too. We're gonna look into that too. I don't care if you're in love. First of all, if you ain't you're a human, you ain't marrying no rabbit. That's not gonna happen. Human have you ever read the book of Leviticus? It says thou shall not have sex with the beasts of the field. Cut, cut it. He, he's he's talking Bible. No, yeah, continue yeah, with definitely. continue with that verse, Governor. I've I've just told you what it says. Yeah, I, I didn't hear you. Thou shall not have sex with the beasts you. of the field. It's in the Bible. Oh we We're still at war with uh with Texas. And it's a war we're going to win. Um, Texas is full of cowards. Um, and the only thing bigger in Texas is guts. Like big old fat. Texas are, Texans are fat. Hello, caller. You're on Words with Willie. Hey, Willie. What's the topic for today? Today we're talking about uh, job interviews, how to nail a job interview. If you got one coming up, you know, Willie's uh, doing mock interviews. Uh, do, do you have a job I- interview coming up, caller? Actually, I do have a job interview coming up, Willie. I, I, I what's uh, what's the job caller? I'm currently applying to the U.S. Army. Oh, uh, I don't think that's a, an application process. That's more of a, you know, they just kind of trick you at, at the mall. Well, I'm going to be working an administration job in the U.S. Army. Smart. You don't have to. You don't have to get shot at. Um, but nope. you you still get all them sweet sweet benefits. Yep, and it's great. I get to serve my country and 
Maybe one day I'll fly to Afghanistan and kill all those filthy sand niggers. Hello, caller. You're on Words with Willie. Um, do you have a job interview coming up? No, but I, I'm wondering what you are doing exactly there, Willie. I've seen six flies buzzing back and forth. What kind of demon demonolatory are you up to? Did we, you, you know, hail Satan. We uh, we bought uh, and hail Satan, caller. Um, you know, we we bought some uh, we bought some goats. Uh, at the beginning of the stream, uh, we thought we thought goat sacrificing was gonna be was gonna be bigger. Um, did you have someone? Did you have someone violate it? You have to have someone violating it. No, yeah, we we did. Oh, I I violated the goats. Don't worry about that, caller. Um, you know, did you it's throw it. The the goat sacrificing wasn't as big as we thought, um, and I didn't think to buy any goat food because I thought you know these goats would just go. So they're um, supposed to just get it done. Caller, That's not supposed to be a long process. Caller, we're sitting on about twenty eight dead goats right now. Um, yeah, and I have and I have a skull that that's decaying in a in a bucket right now that I need. Let's uh, you know, you have a skull. Yes, it's pretty badass. Um, but yeah, I don't know what to do with these goats. So, so you're not you're not doing any uh, demon military. Well, no, no you know, it was it was gonna be you know sacri- if the callers wanted to call in and you know have a goat sacrificed in their name, you know, we use that life energy to project um, you know our intentions towards them. Um, but I kind of forgot about the sacrifices, and and the viewers kind of forgot about the sacrifices, and then the goats just kind of. Well, they started to eat each other. They became cannibalistic when they realized there was no food. Um, How did that even happen? I know. I thought they were herbivores, but if if you're supposed to be herbivores, if you let a goat goat go hungry enough, it'll eat another goat, and it's a uh, it's traumatizing to see. How, how, what's the stench like? It's not it's great. Be pretty awful. It's not great, but honestly, uh, my balls have smelt worse, so. I, I'd put it at a seven. That's lovely. I'd put it at a seven on the Willie scale. What's a pig pen smell like to you? A, a pig uh, pen? A pig pen yeah, like is, a, like is a about a six. It's a, really? It, well, it depends on the type of pig oh. we're talking. Uh, I'm talking like a pig farm. Yeah, that's about like, a, that's a six. No, God awful. That's a, if we're talking like, you know, just a couple hogs, that, that's like a four to five. Uh, a whole ass farm. That's a uh, all right. A six. I was just, I'm just, I'm just looking out for you. No, yeah, I, I appreciate the, the beautiful you know, bub. I asshole. say we let these flies do their thing. In seven to eight months, you know, we're gonna have some you, some cool uh, some cool goat skulls to hang on the on the wall here. You 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 gotta get some bleach or some lye and a bucket, preferably a metal bucket because you know acid won't melt through that hopefully. And you let them soak for a bit. I, I, I've good? always heard bury them, but uh, Willie Rince and the landlord said I can't, uh, I can't make any holes in the yard. So I said you need a bucket and you need to bury the skull in a uh, solution of like bleach or lye. Lye will just melt the flesh right off. How I just lie at it? You get some lye. You can get some from Home Depot, I think. I, I get most my lies from Congress. Am I right? Amanda, am I right? Because <laughs> because they're all liars. Yes, they you're are, number really. one too, Amanda. All of them. Okay, oh, yeah, I'll I'll, uh, I'll try that. I'll put them in a bucket and lie to them. See if, see if that does anything. Well, that might work. That might work. Um, again, just just looking out for you. No, I, to, I appreciate it, caller. Um, hail not... Satan, and like I said. You know, hopefully we'll have some uh, some cool decor for the studio here. Awesome. Ave Lucifer. Have a great evening. Hail Satan. Ave Satanus. Satinus. Anyway, that's uh that's uh number five on the things to do at an interview. Uh smell nice. They don't like it if you smell like shit. Um, I guess unless you're uh Getting a job at like a, a sewage plant 
or a, a pig farm like we mentioned before. The smell smell as bad as you want. Let's let's get another caller. Hello, caller. You're on Words with Willie. Do you have an upcoming interview? Uh, yeah, my name is Dan, and I am actually a expert at um, interview processes. Oh, um, really? I'm just words with you. H- have you been? Have you been? You know, uh, watching tonight's stream. Um, you uh, know, yeah. And, and, yeah. And I, I, how would you rank my advice, Dan? Uh, your advice is actually pretty good. Uh, now you see you're, you're following parts of the uh, three-step method that I actually came up with. I I think I think we all would be very interested to hear at least two of those three steps. All right. Well, it's called the ASS method. Uh, it stands for. Um, uh, Dan, are fuck, you there? I forgot the first word. I, I forgot the first word. I forgot the first word. Frankly. Uh, oh, assert dominance. Yep. Stand your ground. Mm-hmm. And strip down. Um, oh, strip down. Yeah, basically what you do, okay, uh, you assert your dominance, you stand tall, okay? First thing you got to do, okay, you need to really show the interviewer who's boss, and you're really doing that very well. It's Willie. Uh, you need to, Willie's in charge. Yeah. yeah, Willie is in charge. That's, that's the way that you need to be. And then uh, whenever you prove to them that you are in charge, you need to stand up. And you need to make yourself big and burly, kind of like you're defending or defending yourself from a bear. And ah! you're big and tall and strong. Exactly. There it is. And now comes the part where you strip down. You need to get butt naked to assert dominance. You gotta get butt naked. You gotta get butt naked. Uh, Amanda, will, will YouTube let me get butt naked? Absolutely not. Every single time. Every All right, everyone, time, imagine Willie is naked. Message. Close your eyes. Imagine my rippling pecs, my eight pack, and my seven inch dong is just hanging loose. Yeah, now, uh, for added benefit, you can actually take and put your dick on the table, believe it or not, and it will it, it will assert even more dominance, okay? You need to be the dominant person, okay? Even if the other people who are interviewing you are dominant, you need to make them submissive. What if they take their dick out? Well, at that point, it's a dick measuring competition, Willie, and you need to, you need to hope that you are bigger. Well, here, here's the, you're at a disadvantage. Your dick has been out longer on a cold desk. It's starting to shrink. Well, that's whenever you, that's whenever you start stroking. Frankly, uh, you got to keep it up. You got to keep that girth out. And then if they, if they follow the same method, they begin stroking as well. Is it whoever comes first wins or loses? Uh, it's basically like a game of uh, Soggy Cracker. Okay, uh, so you come on their keyboard and then eat it to establish your dominance. Absolutely. I like it. That's uh. Yeah. Everyone, everyone in the wins, chat, please take notes. Yeah, whoever wins, um, they get the job, and whoever loses ends up on a sex offender registry. Oh, so the stakes are high. It's like racing for pinks. Yeah, pretty much, yeah. These are some high, high stakes, my friend. I, You know what? Willie's got a... Willie's, I'm going to get a job interview tomorrow. Um, I saw saw the Costco's doing open interviews tomorrow. Now, in an open interview uh, situation, it you know, it could turn into an actual game of, uh, of Limp Biscuit. You know, you got eight people stroking it. W- what do you do then? You, you just gotta be. You gotta be the first one, man. You gotta be the first one to come. Well, hey, you don't have to worry about that with Willie. Willie's always the first to come and the last to cry. Uh, I feel that. I feel that on a deep level, my friend. Well, I, I appreciate your advice. I hope everyone in the chat, everyone watch right now. I hope you all took notes. Um, this is that. That's really good advice, caller. Yeah. Uh. Thank you. Uh, thanks for having me on, Willie. Of course, and thank you, and hail Satan. Hail Satan. Of course, cu- Cousin Roman, you make eye contact the whole time you're stroking it. If you break eye contact, you, you, you've broken the interview. Let's get another call. We're going to get a couple more calls, and then uh, 
I think all of you will be ready for uh, for a big job interview. <clears throat> yeah. Hello, caller. You're on words with Willie. Um, do you have a job interview coming up? Um, yes, 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 for the post office. For the post office. And uh, do you have any questions about your upcoming interview? Anything you're nervous about? Well, I mean, should I get on my knees and suck his cock, or should I get on my knees and pray to God to get the job? Uh, I'm kind of confused here. Now, if we're if we're basing off what what that last caller told us, you force them on their knees. Oh, okay, okay. That establishes your dominance. I would say you right. force them on their knees and then you strip naked. Um, you know, if they start to pray to their God, you win. Um, if they start sucking your dick, you win. It's a win-win at that point. That's a, that's the ultimate interview hack. Get naked, push your interviewer on your on their knees. You've got a job. All right, that's pretty damn good advice. You know, should I add some little cocaine, mango cocaine on my cock to do it for added benefit? You know, I would do a little, but you, you're gonna have to worry about coke dick. You know, you're you're oh. if you get a little, you know, you get more than than about a gram in that thing's you're you're pushing rope at that point. You know, you've got a you got a dead rat in your pants at that point. Oh shit! I guess I, should, I guess I should have sprinkle some of it. I guess. Oh, if you're putting it on there. You know, all that's doing, that's just going to numb their mouth. Um, you know, that you don't really get any benefit of that. I mean, you get a little bit of their coke spit in your pee hole, but um, I think the science is still out on that. All right. Okay. All right. Good advice, Willie. Good advice. That, that's what we're here to do. We're here to give good advice um, and give people jobs. All right. Thank the Lord you're here for us. Oh, uh, yeah, yes. Thanks to Dark Lord Satan. Um, that no, I, I say thank, thank the good old Lord Jesus Christ for. Oh you know. no, he's uh, he he's he has nothing to do with getting a job. In oh, fact, Jesus God. like hated jobs and capitalism, and he like beat up a, a market or something. <laughs> okay. I saw it in an episode of Veggie Tales. He saw someone okay. selling like peaches and got really pissed off. I don't know about that, Willie, but uh, hey, but you, I have to admit, you do look like Jesus Christ, you know. So uh, I, I hear I hear that a lot. Um, you know, I like and, to think and, of and myself you, as kind of like the opposite of Jesus, um, an uh, anti-Jesus, if you will. Well, I mean, well, you did when you were in, in the Buddhism hotline, and Jonathan, you know, killed you so many times. You resurrected a bunch of times too, you know. So that's that's kind of like Jesus like there. Oh no, that guy was just dumb and didn't know how to tell if a person was alive or dead. Willie's very good at playing possum. Oh, uh, well, well, okay. Good thing he sucks. He wouldn't have you here giving us. <laughs> and a now play. he's and now he's dead. All right, yeah. Uh, Willie's he's, Willie's he's everything's coming up Willie, as they say. All right. Yeah. Thank God that that took place. Well, caller, uh, good luck on your interview. Um, hail Satan, and uh, I hope you get a blow job and a, and a real job tomorrow. Uh, hey, I hope yeah, you get a blow but... career. Blow career, okay, a blow, yeah. Blow All right, job. caller, blow, blow uh, thank you as always, and hail Satan. All right, thanks. He was gonna, he was gonna say it that time. He normally says, he normally says God bless, but he was gonna say hail Satan that time. I felt it. Well, they shouldn't be such cowards then. All right, we're going to get one final call tonight. Um, and then uh, I'll kind of go through the chat. If you guys have any last-minute questions, um, you know, you, you didn't get in on the phone lines, ask them in the chat. We're going to get a call, a final call. Um, they'll answer some questions, and then all of you will uh, go get a job tomorrow. Get Hello. That, get, get that other one. Hello, caller. You're on words with Willie. Hello. Uh, hello, Willie. How are you doing today? I, I'm doing great. How How are you tonight, caller? I'm doing just wonderful, man. I got my beer. <laughs> I got my chips. I'm watching you, man. You You do a much better job. I I, I do. I do. I do great jobs. Um, you know, I've had many great jobs. And uh, caller, do you have any questions about interviews? 
Yeah, I have a job interview coming up on Friday. I'm going to be getting a job at uh, at the Gap. I'm just wondering what kind of things should I look out for. At the Gap, at, is that is that slang for something? Is that like the Grand Canyon? Uh, no, the Gap is an all male strip club. So I'm oh, just wondering. the Gape, the Gape. Yeah, the they, the, that ease that ease been burnt out for a while. Um, oh wow, you, you got an interview at the Gape. That is impressive. Yep. That uh, I've only, I I worked there very briefly. Um, apparently you can take it too far, so I'd I'd watch out for that caller. Okay, thank you, Willie. Hey, if you ever come down to the Gape, bro, bro, free wings and free lap dances for you. Now, you know this is a little off topic, but I've always wondered this. Why do they serve wings at a strip club? It's such a messy yeah. food. And, you know, sometimes the stripper, if you tip her nice, she'll let you squeeze a titty, and the wing gives you away. So now you're out $100, and you're getting beat up by the bouncer. You know why we serve wings at the gate? We want to be like Hooters, but you don't bring your kids there. Well, you're not supposed to take your kids there. Well, some some eighteen and nineteen year olds slip into the gape. How many eighteen or nineteen year olds have slipped into into the gape since you've been there? I think around fifteen. A lot of those wild universe wild college. Kids. Yeah, those those wild college kids can't help but slip into the gape, right? I know, man. Um, uh, I just want to say one final thing, man. You're an amazing person. Uh, free wings, free lap dances. Hell, I'll get you, I'll get you I'll get you Alejandro's phone number. You'll love him. He is amazing. Uh, and, it uh, sounds like I will. Hey, if you keep offering me free hot wings, you know there's gonna be uh, there's gonna be more than just chicken bones in there. There's gonna be another type of bone. I can't wait, Willie and uh, JJ Ramsey six five four five Ward Chair Road, Brookfield, Ohio. Gabby Paper. What- no shout outs on words with Willie, please. Um, I don't know what that was. Uh, no shout outs, please, unless they're uh, pre approved. Uh, if you want a pre approved shout out, please email wordswithwillie420 at gmail.com. Um, all right, so I'm going to answer some, some questions here in the chat, then I think we'll call it a night. Lultronics, yes, bum life is the best life. Um, however, unfortunately, we do live. In a capitalist society, um, and apparently, uh, you know, things cost money. Willie uh, got his his last computer. What I was doing the the originally doing the streams on got that through the barter system, and uh, that really wasn't working out for me. So, um, I pulled a blank there. I forgot what you asked, but. Uh, I hope you get that job. Oh, oh yes. Um, how big is my little Willie? Well, Willie stands at a uh, at six three. So I assume what little Willie is a, a tenth of that. So sixty three inches. It is sixty three inches. That's how big uh, Willie's little Willie is. Uh, anything we missed earlier in the show? I did deserve an Emmy for my... You just got taken to Bukake City. Line. Um, thank you. Hail Satan. La Hail Satan's in the chat. Fuck yes. Um, is this where dad has sex with the midgets? Um... Anime here, I don't know what that was about, um, but it's little people. Is this where dad has sex with the little people? All right, everyone. I uh, I appreciate all the calls. I appreciate you all uh, uh, checking in tonight. Please, uh, you know, tell tell your friends about this show. Um, we're looking to spread the community. Um, you know, I, I'm thinking about doing a, a simul stream to a... To Twitch as well, but uh, you know, YouTube, you're still my baby. 
Um, why is it when I go to get a job, they always call me and say I'm not fit for the job? Is it because of my leaking anus? Um, Jimmy, yes. What you do, you stuff that leaking anus up, uh, then get the job, then unstuff it. And then when they fire you because you have a leaky anus, uh, you sue them because that's a hippo violation. Anyway, please like, comment down below, subscribe. Um, I, I'll have a I'll have an announcement um, this weekend about some upcoming content I'm gonna need uh, everyone's help with. Like I said, I appreciate y'all checking in. Hail Satan! Like, comment, subscribe. Tell your dad. Tell your mom. Tell everyone. And um.